Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be a recast. It is an amazing game, I will say. I won't say who won. But if you wanted to catch the original cast where, honestly, I missed a lot of action, which is one of the reasons I'm recasting it, it is on Patreon. This is on Eclipse in the upper... And it's an inter-clan match, which, from Team Red, a clan I would like to highlight. We Upper right-hand corner, we have Dark Storm as the purple Zerg, bottom left-hand corner. We have Rota as the pink Protoss with alliteration. And nailed it. For, I had to actually restart this because I couldn't say the colors right. <laughs> I don't know what's with me. Uh, I did want to mention, if you were catching this after the BSL casts, that Shafir was very kind to go in and actually mention the map selection. So I think Darren was trying to do the exact thing I was mentioning and go for a map selection pool to put Shafir more in the dark. Because, Darren, you actually get to choose the next map you go to. I guess in between, and Darren had cho he decided to go to Gold Rush. And I think he had better preparation on Gold Rush, but Darren, but Shafir was saying, you know, that little probe trick down below really helped him out. Rota, by the way, setting up for a fast expansion build. We'll see. It's possible to still plop down a gateway. More often, the more current meta for Zerg and Protoss, or PVZ, I should say, from that perspective, is to go gateway. It looks like he's opting for a forge first instead. We do see a spawning pool on 11. Opposite corner, and we'll see if he decides to save up Larva to go for that initial attack. Although with this forge and this cannon and a little bit of a probe blockade, usually you can push that back. And it also, depending if you produce, that can, the thing with Zerg is you need to accelerate, right? You want to build as many drones as possible whenever you can. So going even those initial couple Zerglings can set you back time-wise quite a bit. Probe trying to make its way up. It looks like that drone is going to be able to blockade, but Rhoda able to sneak through. Ah! Sneaking through and then going back down the ramp for a moment. Now opting to try to disrupt that natural expansion and manages to once. Super annoying, and that's going to force at least a handful. We'll see how many Zerglings get produced right here. Maybe the full complement, because we have all three in position. A second drone pulling off the line, so it looks like Dark Swarm wants to opt instead for a hatchery before he produces any sort of larva. Or maybe he just wants to make sure that Rhoda sees... Yeah, you wanted to make sure that Rhoda saw all three eggs being produced to put them a little bit in the dark. So we, we know that there's just two Zerglings and a couple drones, but what this forces Rhoda to do comparatively is build a cannon defensively, maybe even two cannons defensively, just in case that was a full complement of links. But he's got that gateway, he's going to create that blockade, and this probe has got to feel like the most heroic probe of all time, right? Maybe not of all time. Maybe that probe that ended up winning the game. There's got to be some StarCraft match out there where a probe ends up winning the game by killing, like, a Archon or something. That that probe's got to feel the most heroic. But this probe, in the lines, in that battle trench. Trench? Trench. Nexus was built a little bit earlier, I believe, seeing that natural expansion attempting to be built. But it looks like Dark Swarm's going to adjust to this by taking a quick expansion at the 1 o'clock base. Gas is up. Four more Zerglings have been produced. Initial two Zerglings are going to get a look at that front door. Rota trying to keep that probe alive as long as possible uh, for scouting information, but I think even in close positions, if these Zerglings tried to shoot this gap, that those that cannon should be able to take care of them. Cybernetic score at the natural expansion. Kind of an interesting position for it, because oftentimes the Overlord can drift over and get a good look at it. And Pro making its way out. Let's see if it sneaks up to that 12 o'clock and spots what's there. Hatchery is up. And it looks like there was a single probe on gas, but it, or a single drone on gas, but it's going to go ahead and pull off with Zergling speed being produced. And this is a lot of Zerglings on the ground now for Dark Swarm. So it is possible he's going to go for a Ling Flood, as I was not paying attention in the meantime. So this is a good full complement of Zerglings. And this is one Zealot and one Cannon and one very, very stalwart probe that is now finally going back to do his normal job. Got to feel like a relief right there to try to defend against a lot of Zerglings. And just the flat positioning oftentimes can let you, just the blockade, the nice SimCity, as they call it, out in front can help defend against this. However, however, overall, it's not a guarantee. Sometimes Zerglings can just sneak past, get that Zealot down, sneak through, get scouting information, do additional damage. Gateway being produced for Rhoda. In back corner, he's also popping down a second gas, which suggests he's going for less gateway units and more tech-heavy units. 12 o'clock base is also now produced. Well, looks like a... This almost is kind of like a pseudo-973, except gas is not being grabbed by Dark Swarm at all. He's just now starting to move those drones to gas, which might put him a little bit behind in his capacity to deal with the Stargate. He might have to opt for 
perhaps a evolution chamber and some spire to deal with it. He's dropping down at Hydalus Den right now. And he's putting down a fourth hatchery at this 12 o'clock location. So he's going to have a very strong economy in this mid-game. Robotics facility being built for Rhoda. Which is a little bit unusual. And this overlord, this is a bit sneaky from Rhoda. Kind of paid off for him. So by placing the cybernetics core and a lot of his tech here at the natural, as this overlord dives into his main, all it sees is this initial Corsair that is wailing on his overlord. And so basically, Dark Swarm, where usually you sacrifice that overlord to get scouting information and see what your opponent's up to, he's instead in the dark. Fifth hatchery, the natural, SimCity being produced, Hydralisk speed to help deal with that Corsair. And a couple Hydralisks should be produced um, to deal with this, but it's going to be a little bit thin on the lines overall. So two Corsairs in flight still might be able to get additional kills. Level 1 weapons being upgraded. We do have three Zealots on the ground. Um, but we are seeing a shuttle otherwise. So Rhoda doing something very unusual. It is not very often you see Shuttle in a Zerg versus Protoss matchup, unless you see Corsair Reaver. And usually you do not see Corsair Reaver on a map like on a two-player map, and oftentimes you do not see it on a map that isn't just huge and wide open, because usually it's that distance and the, the lack of reinforcements that allow you to pull that off. You see only a single so I guess this is gonna work out, but only a handful of Hydralisks to try to defend overlords from these Corsairs. But it looks like it's going to be enough. Two Corsairs out on the field, and we see a Reaver being produced from Rhoda. So two things. One, that Reaver can get some free Zergling kills. Reavers do very, very well against Zerglings. But otherwise, this is very unusual play from Rhoda. Evolution Chamber being plopped at that 12 o'clock base, and Lair being upgraded about... What is that? Four Fists finished? Four fifths complete, range being upgraded as well. Of course, they're going to be able to take out that overlord in the bottom right hand corner as well. Looks like two additional gateways being plopped in the main. Two zealots loading up with this reaver. This is almost looking like a Protoss versus Terran sort of match. That does supply cap Dark Storm. But now we have a reaver. It's going to be three Corsairs. A slow shuttle and some zealots moving across. And what these Corsairs are going to be able to do is they're going to also be able to provide a little bit of scouting as far as what's available. And you can see it's almost going to turn into a two-pronged attack. Rhoda's going to try to dive into this 12 o'clock, poke away at this Overlord, which is going to distract Dark Swarm while he goes for perhaps a drop at the 2 o'clock position. Well, that's not 2 o'clock, is it? 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock? Eh, 2.30. So Corsair's right there, providing a little bit of a distraction. They're going to dive back in, poke that corner while the shuttle goes ahead and plops off some Zealots. Oof. Killing a lot of Hydals initially, not yet getting a probe kill, and ooh, very quickly taken out. It is moving away. The Corsair is coming back to home base. So early losses for Rhoda. That did not pay off. He does have his natural expansion up. He is holding that, but he did not get a lot out of that drop at all. Getting several more gateways. So definitely he's planning on sticking to two base for a while. He's got five gateways up. Has another Reaver on that front door. The one nice thing about Reavers on the front like this is you don't have to worry about all ends as much. You tend to be a little bit more insulated against it because Reaver plus cannons and any sort of beef in the front and they can just melt a lot of Zerg units. Going to weapons two very rapidly. So as weapons one, not a lot of units on the ground to support it. But switching up, and Dark Swarm, realizing he has map control as a result of all this, is just going to continue to expand. Three Corsairs still trying to sneak out, deny scouting information, and catch whatever they can. Maybe look like they're going to suicide up into that Overlord there, but there's enough Hydralisks that are going to dissuade them from that prospect. And we have another shuttle moving out, this time with speed. And Rhoda continuing to try to do the multi-pronged effort, providing... A distraction. Ooh, one Corsair getting wiped out. Two Corsairs getting taken out. But another drop. Dark Swarm does have some Hydralisks in position, but it does not look like he realizes that this is here because he has not reacted to this shuttle at all. So going to get a nice dive into the main and wipes out five drones. Nine drones with two shots. That's exactly what you want out of that sort of attack. And now he's going to make his way to the one o'clock position. There are Hydralisks there. It loses another shuttle. Drops out the Reaver. And gets one last shot before it is wiped out. So a little bit lighter on Corsairs now. 
does have a yet another shuttle. And more Reavers being produced. So this is very reminiscent of the previous game. <laughs> Involving Rhoda and I believe Machine, which is fun. And he is going to continue to queue up these shuttles. Let's see if he's just going to drop Zealots and other things out of it. Do we see a second Robo? I don't see a second Robo anyplace. But we do see a lot of Zealots and a lot of High Templar. He's actually getting uh, Calderas, the Calderan Amulet. And he's moving out with those Zealots, clearing the front. So Reaver, High Templar, Zealots out on the loose. I think I might have missed the size storm, but I think the size storm is already produced. Going to go ahead and drop. Might think about taking that three o'clock, or sorry, that nine o'clock location for himself. Did have a sneaky corsair that was spotting that hydralisk along that corner. So what does Rota do from here? He is up against four mining bases and a lot of hatcheries. A lot of hatcheries. What's that? Four, five, six, seven. Dark Swarm, and this is the thing, even when you clear out, this is kind of the problem with this sort of thing, is even when you're able to wipe out drone lines like this. Because Zerg has so many hatcheries and so many larvae, they can very, very quickly reproduce. So really what, for Rhoda to get into this match and not get overwhelmed in the mid game, particularly going four bases two, what he's gonna need to do is he's going to need to actually wipe out bases. I think this is just zealots in here. So going to try to sneak another drop here Going all the way to the main. It does not look like Dark Swarm saw it again. And simultaneously, he's going to attack across that position. So just a bunch of Zealots drop there. Another attack diving in, but there are plenty of units to engage this. There is a Reaver on the low ground and a lot of Psystorm. And initially, that is not where you wanted that to go. Psystorm trying to clear out the Lurkers. There are also not Observers because he's using so much of his supply on shuttles and everything else. But these Zealots... Just having a field day. So one kill on that one, two kills on that. That's caused all of these drones to flee the natural, leading them down to the lurker line. But we have another shuttle and another reaver while Dark Swarm is looking for that. Does manage to wipe that one out. Shuttle still a little bit latent with one zealot in it. Latent? Uh, existent. Zealot still somehow in the main. It is going to wander out of the natural expansion. And there's still a threatening standing army with lots of potential size storm and whatnot. So Rhoda, what he has managed to do is just disrupt a lot of mining. And while he's doing all of these shenanigans, he's going to go ahead and take that 9 o'clock base. And maybe actually take the 10 o'clock base simultaneously. Has a lot of size storm to help protect this. Probably will want some cannons and maybe some reavers to protect it. Does have double robo up now. Still has two shuttles. And he's going ahead and moving to weapons three. And producing, continuing to produce off five gateway. However, if you look at the raw supply counts, this is a lot of drones for Dark Swarm. This is a lot of lurkers to provide a nice defensive cusp. But Rhoda is undeterred. He is moving in with yet another shuttle. Another shuttle migrating its way. The f migration of the shuttles with the High Templar. Dropping off the natural expansion. Oh, you cannot get a better storm than that. Seven kills, almost eight. Before scooping up and Dark Swarm finally reacting to that. A single zealot moving around just to try to clear things. And Rhoda's going to park that. Wait for some energy to recharge. And he'll have another opportunity to probably do some additional damage. Three more shuttles out. One of them with some Dragoons and Zealots. Sometimes the problem with the Protoss army is that it is not mobile. Rhoda does not have that problem. He is a very mobile army. Needs to be careful moving these High Templar out like this. Might end up getting them taken out. Zealot getting wiped out by Zerglings, and it looks like, yeah, just as they're getting active, the High Templar are moving their way back across. There is a probe transfer that might have been vulnerable. Some Zerglings moving across. Level 2 weapons is up for Dark Swarm, but it's going to be level 3 weapons in not too long for Rhoda, so he is going to have a superior ground army. Another drop. Not as much. I think I might have missed a little bit there. There's some splotches on the ground. And while that's happening, yet another drop to the one o'clock, but this is just gonna be pure units. And actually, if they can take out that evolu evolution chamber, that would be pretty valuable to slow down that armor upgrade. And it looks like the Zealots, no, oh, doesn't look like they're gonna focus fire on it. We're just mostly trying to concentrate on the drone lines. Hydralis finally getting up there and able to clean everything up. This is why I needed to recast it, because I missed several of these drops in the original casting. Dark Swarm, Dark Swarm, Dark Storm, I'm going to make that mistake a lot because of the 
Why is there no... Actually, I'm wondering if there is a talented Zerg player out there by the name of Dark Swarm. There should be, right? Right? Anyway. Darkstorm is setting up to take this expansion in the upper left-hand base. Yet another shuttle moving out with a single High Templar. Still two more shuttles waiting alongside. Rhoda camping this army to provide a little bit of protection. You can see he's got another shuttle moving to the upper left. So he's going to once again try to go for double drops. We'll follow this one, and then we'll try to sneak across and catch both drops as they're happening. Army is migrating to the upper left. Here's the first drop. Is he going to get a good storm here? But second storm, getting a lot of kills. That's four kills for that High Templar. That is, I didn't get a good look at that uh, attack right there, unfortunately. It's hard to tell which one's going to fire off first. That shuttle getting wiped out, but this shuttle able to sneak back with full health and the High Templar intact. Some Hydralisks and a Lurker trying to sneak in, and they're going to catch, yeah, pretty soft base, honestly, although Psystorm might be able to clean this up. Might be able to clean this up. Let's see. Good Storm. Unfortunately, you need two Storms to kill a Lurker. While that was happening, the Dragoon's going to clear out that front. Let's see if they can... There's the second Storm able to clear that up, but that's not... Two Storms to kill a single Lurker, that's a win for Dark Swarm. Nice Lurker spread here at the one. But behind those lurkers, another shuttle making its way. And does it drop? Okay, skipping there, but there are Hydralisks waiting, so that that's going to get taken out. Dark Swarm, Dark Storm getting wise to the shenanigans. and starting to do a better job of being in protective formation. But as I say that, three more shuttles moving across the center of vision. But there are no Hydralisks here. There's one Hydralisk, two Hydralisks to try to, to deal with this. So they're trying... That's some Dragoons, a Reaver and a High Templar, and some more High Templar moving into the main, dropping off. Going to use the high ground to engage this. Good Psystorm on the ramp as they're entering. That Reaver, unfortunately, targeting the close units instead of the far. It's getting wiped out fairly rapidly. But while that attack's happening, Rhoda's going to go ahead and wander with his observers. Unfortunately, the observer's trailing a little bit to take out this 1 o'clock base. Sorry, yeah, 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Somewhere around there. Well, 12 o'clock, actually. I can tell time. So this drop and shuttles were taken out, but a lot of damage done. Ooh, Psystorming his own observers, unfortunately, and that's going to make the rest of the lurkers much stronger. Maybe Psystorm will take him out, and unfortunately, as these lurkers are coming in, they're coming in entirely clumped, and so they're just eating a lot of storm. So much storm they're eating as Rhoda's moving in. This base is going to be in a lot of trouble momentarily. Those Lurkers do have to lift. Oh, he's going to back off. Okay, he's repositioning to that upper right. Still might be able to take this hatchery out. That would be a big win. Some Scourge right there to try to take out some Observers that, and to make these Lurkers uh, more protected and effective, but there's not any Observers there. Now the Lurkers, huge number of Lurkers moving in. Is there a Storm left? There's no Storm left. So that one High Templar out, and Rhoda is going to go ahead and exit. He has more reinforcements coming in across the mini-map. And instead, he's going to opt to, yeah, take this very soft, unprotected base there. There are Observers escorting these Dragoons. Dragoons do pretty well against Lurkers, as long as they can see them and micro against them. Unfortunately, the Observer move, it's just being a troll and moving away from those Dragoons. But now Rhoda going ahead and going to take up Residence in the upper left-hand corner with a bunch of High Templar and Dragoons and wipe that base out. Another shuttle while that's all happening, full of Zealots making its way across the base. So he's just unrelentingly distracting and dropping everything here. Are These Zealots don't even get to drop, it looks like. Observer checking things out before making their way back across. If they camp right here, this is kind of an inverted, even though you get high ground advantage, I think Dark Swarm wants to take this base. And so... Having to peel down a little, it's almost like that funnel sort of thing we saw previously, right? More units marching their way down. Zergen's going to get wiped out by those zealots. Expansion being taken in that bottom right-hand corner. Overall, Dark Swar Darkstorm, keep doing that. Darkstorm still in an excellent position. He's got his main still mining, <laughs> primarily because his drones have been taken out so often. Um... Pretty well saturated on this. He's still got four mining bases. He'll have a fifth momentarily. Rhoda trying to be sneaky and take that base. Some Zerglings flooding through. Want to get on top of those Dragoons. But again, because of the distance and because of the positioning, not getting a lot accomplished there. Some Zealots being wiping out some units that were sneaking out towards that nine. 
I'm actually preemptively mining before it even finished. Okay, good catch there. Looks like while I was distracted by that, that probe got killed and wiped out bottom right hand base. So Rhoda realizing it's going to be difficult to take another base. He's going to go ahead and take that expansion in the upper left hand corner. And retreat back here. If he can get a Reaver out here, the thing is, is once you have cannons and a Reaver or High Templar and any sort of ramp position or a funnel, it is very difficult to evict a Protoss from those locations. Darkstorm licking his wounds, regathering. He does. He's still behind in the overall upgrade battle. Level 3 weapons, level 1 armor for Oda. Another shuttle making its way across. Level one, Just level 1 weapons, level 1 armor. So basically, just pure unit versus pure unit, especially in small numbers like this, Rhoda is going to end up taking an advantage. So more units trying to flood across here, but again... They have to go piecemeal, and because of the inferior upgrades, they just keep getting wiped out. Big army movement here for Darkstorm, finally. I'm not sure, like honestly, it might be better if he just loops around, takes this out, and continues from there. Rhoda trying to establish himself at this bottom right-hand base. And it looks like some Zergling's gonna maybe make a move here. We'll see if Rhoda's wise and tries to go for a drop. There is a shuttle with a Reaver near here. Defiler Tech's finally up. Now moving in. Yeah, there's all of the Zerglings flooding down. Dark Swarm could completely disrupt all of this because there's no melee units. There's a Storm whiffing everything. Second Storm might catch a few units, does catch its own Observer, and actually attacks some of Rhoda's own units. And this base looks like it might be breached. More cannons being built, but that Dark Swarm makes the cannons, the Dragoons, and the High Temple are mostly ineffective. But while that was happening, some DTs have dropped. And this DT has four kills. And is continuing to rank... Wow. If this was like one of those other games where units rank up as they are getting kills, this DT would already be like hero class, right? And a, an overlord looks like it was in position but migrated out of position. Finally, Darkstorm realizing it and starting to move up and deal with that. So this got cleaned up. I think that, yeah, that shuttle finding getting wiped out. This base in the upper left-hand corner while he was distracted somehow holds. But Darkstorm still in a good position. Rhoda... Managing to hold bases, but his main is mined out. His natural is mined out, so he's basically three bases versus five. And there's starting to be a lot of scourge up in the air, so the shuttles, in theory, will be less effective. His big critical advantage here is he's got level three weapons, level one armor, against level two weapons, level two armor. And he has, you know, late game Protoss units. Ooh, poor Observer. Glad I got that. More Dark... More Dark Swarm from Dark Storm in this upper left-hand base, but not a lot of Zerglings to try to deal with. This. If you can get Lurkers underneath that, that is usually the golden ticket for you. So just You can just see how quickly with that splash damage they clear all of those units out. But once that Reaver, once the Reavers are there, it is a deadlock because Reavers, with that splash damage, just melt everything. Just melt everything. So Rhoda just really being a pain in the hide for Dark Storm here. Big pain. More units starting to moon over. Let's see if that's they're just uh, for defensive purposes or offensive. It's at this stage you want to see Plague, and it looks like we do see... Sorry, that's Scarab Damage. They look very similar, don't they? Scarab Damage and, and Plague. Plague is being upgraded from Darkstorm. Keep in mind this... I'll try to keep an eye there, because there have been so many drops in this game. And also an Arbiter late game for Rhoda. And I'm also wondering if he... <laughs> it would be hilarious if he upgraded Stasis. Arbiter's up. Zergling's flooding through. Good plague, catching absolutely everything. The Zergling's able to clear out the cannons, but not target the Reaver because there is no Overlord in position. Rhoda making his way up the ramp, but because of the positioning from Dark's, Dark's uh, Storm's army, not getting a lot done. And while that was all happening, the Reaver finally dropped this bottom right-hand corner base and got racked up 10 kills and just wiped that out. So Rhoda basically is reestablishing, whenever you attack me, I am going to be stabbing you. <laughs> Someplace over here. Continuing, I don't think Darkstorm even realizes this base is getting wailed on. Hopefully we'll see a Scourge in not too long and a couple units wiping. There is a Nidus Canal, finally a Zergling. It's actually funny because Zerglings this late in the, the game can deal with Reavers pretty quickly. You wouldn't think it because of the Scarab build times and fire rates. Another shuttle moving out with some Dark Templar. Invisible Man, I tell you. We'll keep an eye on that. So, <laughs> as Darkstorm is moving units to deal with that bottom right-hand base, 
does manage to kill that shuttle and take care of the invisible men there, but this Reaver is still somehow alive. Shuttle's taken out. Or sorry, no, shuttle lives. Shuttle's still there. Reaver's finally taken out, but not before an Arbiter is making its way across. Is he going to go for a recall? Hmm. Rhoda just kind of donating units at this stage. Just donating units. Archons morphing in the front. Archon like Archons are just ridiculous. Zealot wandering to just see what's up there. Still managing it as a Zergling kill. And now Zealots making their way, I assume, to this bottom right hand base, which does not have any lurkers in position. Some lurkers are nearby, but really slacking in their duties here. Like, it is your job to take out units. He's trying to do a counterattack, but there are so many Reavers here. Honestly, just the sheer existence of this many Reavers plus Arbiters, it's got to be a terrifying notion. Zealot wailing its way on those on that hatch. You're going to clear this out. And Rhoda might be able to deny this space just by keeping these units in position. Although a Lurker on the low ground like that without any sort of ranged unit can uh, do significant damage. Two shuttles moving up. There's some Reavers now. I think this Rhoda is going to try to take this space. This might turn out... This is going to turn into a who mines out who bay. Ooh. Scourge able to get in position wipe that. Ooh. Some probes also getting... I think the probes were hoping to establish something here and instead getting wrecked. Lurkers taking high ground position. There is no scouting. Or sorry, there's no observing. So they are in fact cloaked. Rhoda trying to move these units back. One Reaver is taken out. That Archon getting mauled on the low ground. Just absolutely devastated. And yeah, these... These units are not long for life, so it looks like Darkstorm is going to be able to re-establish this bottom right-hand base. But as I say that, another shuttle is making its way across with a High Templar. Needs to be careful because there's Scourge in position, so needs to drop... Uh, maybe not. Scourge lacking wherewithal now. Oof. The rest of those units are going to get wiped out. Another drop. Is he going to get the Storm off? Huge Storm! Six kills, seven kills. And a cancellation. <laughs> Archon's just chilling with Defilers. This is like... Defilers look really creepy, by the way. Look at that. Let's get back to base position. We'll be at this position the rest of the map. Little skull thing and everything. Scourge are really slacking here. Are they going to catch that shuttle finally? I'm not sure that they're going to. We're going to watch this for a second. I don't care what else is happening on the map. I want to see if this shuttle gets out or not. If something insane happens on them, but there's a little bit of attacking happening in the front. The shuttle makes it. Come on, Scourge. Are they going to... Finally get it. But honestly, honestly, Scourge, honestly. Archon's being morphed at the front. More attack happening uh, on that front door. Good plague I missed. Upper left-hand corner. Look at the kill counts here, though, from these Reavers. And this is still a very form formidable army. And this 13 kills there. And a drop could completely swing this match, depending on where it's at. So main finally mined out for Dark Storm. Ma the, the, sorry, main and natural mined out. He's still mining off three bases. Could be at four. Good size storm clearing out those Zerglings. Also good Plague. Plague doesn't do much versus Archons, which is one of the reasons they're so valuable. Also, <clears throat> Archons, I believe, cannot be... So basically, it is only robotic units. Or not robotic units. Robotic units cannot be broodlinged late game. And we see some queens being produced as Dark Storm realizes this is going to turn into a long-term war of attrition. And who's going to mine out who, basically? Level 3 armor is up, so these units are going to be a little bit more useful. But this particular... Ooh, Archon getting stormed. The Observer is able to sneak out of the storm so they stay alive. While that's happening, for a second there, I thought these Observers were going to be attacking units, knowing Rhoda. But they're just moving across the map to get some vision. Archons are also a very nice answer to, to uh, the Plague, because they have very low base health, just 10 health, they're mostly shield. These Lurkers, though, just really doing... The, the other problem with Archons, though, is, is they're expensive, first of all. I missed a drop. Mr. Recall, the 12, wiping out all of the drones here. Still working. Let's see some Overlords moving. Scourge, able to damage the Arbiter, but not take it out. And honestly, I feel like if these Reavers... Oh. Yeah, now the Reavers going to get wiped out. This is the thing. Late game Zerglings, particularly with the... I guess they don't... I don't think they have the crack upgrade yet. Getting killed right there. I think... I'm wondering if those Reavers recalled some, to some other position I missed. 
away. I didn't see the little whirl, though. Finally, that Arbiter taken out. So this base is mined out. Rhoda is sitting at a thin base here. This base upper left-hand corner, and he's going up against a three-base Zerg. Well, technically two-base Zerg, now that this has been wiped out. Darkstorm should be able to repopulate that fairly quickly. Moving some Zerglings, trying to keep Rhoda honest. Unfortunately, Rhoda was being honest in this instance and keeping a lot of units at his home base. And able to just wipe that army out as it was flooding in piecemeal. Rhoda going to run back to his protected 4 base Zerg, actually. So this base is up, but not yet mining. Bottom right is mining. So yeah, and this is starting to mine again. Darkstorm has the superior economic position. Rhoda putting up a good fight, though. And let's see if... Yeah, another good plague. Catching a lot of these units. Another good plague. The Filer is going to pay for it with its life, though. Scourge finally doing their job out in the field. Good job, Scourge. And now we see an Arbiter wandering. Is Rhoda going for a recall? Recall from upper left-hand corner. All those Reavers now... There's our friendly 13 kill. It does have an Observer with it. The Observer did not ran into the Arbiter rather than the Observer, so these Lurkers are not going to be as effective as they might have been otherwise. Rhoda not really spreading the shots particularly well, though. And units are flooding up to take care of this. There's three Reavers down. And the Observer cleaned out as well. That's going to disrupt mining, but it is not going to result in either an established base or any sort of death for Darkstorm. Rhoda actually has a pretty sizable bank. But I still don't like his overall positioning. Queens wandering out looking for things they can target. Dragoons tend to be amongst them. Good soft targets. They're nice. They're nice replenish units, right? You can kill the units on the ground, just recharge energy, and then basically not spend anything else. Darkstorm needs to be a little bit careful here. Because even these Zerglings and even that Overlord, every last unit counts. Now. Everything counts. Okay? Because this is now a mine out situation. Rhoda is out. He's basically got this base, which is looking very thin. And then his bank to win this. So Darkstorm, all he needs to do is get su economically superior exchanges, and he will win this. And I think Rhoda realizing that, okay, yep, I'm not going to be able to mine really anything else. Let me just throw my probes out there to die, to free up some supply, and be annoying otherwise. Nice Parasite. Provide some vision. Shuttle with two Reavers. Ooh. Uh. Scourge doesn't get that one once again. Arbiter in position. Queen's there. Maybe an ensnare would help. Desperation creep colonies. Plague only catches a few of these units. One of the Reavers. And it looks like Rhoda is going to be able to just march into this base. And as I said that, actually, no. There's... Wow. The spawn broodling just wiping out the Dragoon forces. Turning Rhoda's own army against him. But the Archons are still here. And the Reavers are still here. And this hatchery's down. And none of these units can be targeted by queens anymore. More units moving out. They need to be careful because they're looking right at that queen swarm positioning. Every time you hear that, that's uh, another queen using its... Uh, yeah. That's another spawn brood... Uh, one of the spawn broodlings dying. And yeah. So Dark Swarm doing what he needs to do. Wipe these base ground units out that are soft and able to be targeted like such. And forcing Rhoda to stay to the more expensive Archon, High Templar, Arbiter, <laughs> Reaver unit composition. A probe moving in position. What he might be able to do is move this Arbiter to that bottom right-hand corner and recall all of these probes. So he can just start mining in. This has been a weird, like, this is what I wish the world was like. Just, you know, Protoss units, Zerg units, people everywhere just hanging out. Peaceably all game. And they just see each other, but they just chill. They respect each other, right? But there's always going to be some hydralisks going up and ruin it, right? Always. This is why we can't have nice things, people. This is why we can't have nice things. Uh, Alright. <laughs> Our console position. 
As long as Darkstorm kills this base and keeps wiping it out, he should win this match overall. He's loading up with some Zerg, doing his own drops. I think I might have missed a drop in the meantime, that bottom right hand base. Not positive. Moving up with some units, the Queen's going to sweep around, but not before a couple of these Hydralists and other units are wiped out. Archon sweeping across as well. Rhoda is trying to establish, yeah, he's trying to establish a strong position here. Archon wandering its way across here. And mm, is it going to engage headlong? It looks like, yeah, it's going to just dive in and get wiped out. Cannons warped in. Nexus warped in. Rhoda might have a shot at this now. Because this is the only mining base of Darkstorm. And he has a smaller bank. Mind out, mind out, mind out, mind out. This is it. So Darkstorm, if he's going to win this, needs to retake this position and set up his own mining base. And that will be victory because Rhoda will run out of resources then. <laughs> Doing a good job. That Queen Broodling range is insane, right? And his answer to this is to go Guardians. He has gone late game Big Air, BGH style. I'm waiting to see if these Arbiters go and try to recall the probes to this bottom left-hand base. Good Parasite to get good vision. Kind of show you guys it. You can just see he sees absolutely everything with that Parasite. And actually, were these Arbiters Parasited? So that Arbiter's not Parasited. Now that Arbiter's moving across. If he can get, if he can land this and get those probes there, that would be huge. <clears throat> be back up to mining. Waiting for these Guardians to start making their way. This is the classic BGH style now, right? This is like many late game BGHs that I remember. With Guardians pounding away at a, a really hard line entrenched Protoss base. Arbiter's making its way across. Not a lot to defend against this. The Archons have very short range to deal with these Guardians. Also, these Lurkers just getting a lot of free damage underneath. Arbiter's here to maybe do something, but there are Scourge and it looks like Devourers and other units to try to deal with this. It looks like, oh, before that recall was even able to be executed. Yeah, there was a stasis, but really needed that for the recall to get the probes down here to get the mining. More Guardians being built to slowly walk into this base. And there's a scout now. Unironic late game scout to try to deal with all this. But two, defile, or two Devourer is a very rare game. You do not see Devourers ever, really. A few more units wandering their way across. Looks like they're not even going to get a Scythe Storm off before they're wiped out. Arbiter in position once again. Was able to recall these probes. So Rhoda is going to be able to mine, but he's getting them just in time to watch that Arbiter die overhead. This reminds me a little bit of that, uh, you know, the London thing where it's like, just keep mining probes, even though you're getting shot in the face. Even though you see these things overhead that are dropping green deadly spores on top of your comrades. Just keep mining. Keep calm and mine. Ugh. Yeah, Archon's getting targeted down one by one by these Guardians. And I think Dark Storm has it. Because there is no High Templar here. There is no... It looks like an army of... A fleet of scouts is wandering in. To maybe try to even things up. But scouts are very easily taken out by a myriad of units. Scourge amongst them. Trying to get back. Oh! Accidentally ensnares his own Scourge. That's not a good look. The Reaver is trying to slow walk up here and do some counter damage, but unfortunately they don't have an Observer and there were still Lurkers in position. So they're getting wiped out. Things not looking good for Rhoda. Darkstorm still mining, still has units. Ooh. Nice and snare. He still has those Guardians. Just needs a couple more air units to deal with these scouts. Some Zerglings flooding their way down, and it looks like he's staging up a sizable army to engage. Zerglings wandering their way forward. Dark Darkstorm needs to be efficient with this, though. Needs to be efficient with these units. Scourge diving in. The Guardians continuing to attack their way forward. Archons moving forward. They're going to get targeted now. Some nice micro there by Roto overall, but I still think that Darkstorm is going to get the better end of this bargain. Oh, Scourge did like an over-suicide there. Nice and snare. 
but not a lot of follow-up units, so more Guardians getting picked off, and Rhoda continues to defend. Being a big thorn in Darkstorm's side here. More scouts moving forward, grouping up. Guardians Overlords, looks like they might, if they can drop that Defiler, that would be huge. Because you get a Dark Storm down, yeah. A Dark Swarm from Dark Storm, and a Plague! Archon's trying to make their way forward, that actually will work to Rhoda's benefit. Trying to work on the ground units. Defilers, Devourers, sorry, moving up. Trying to work on the scouts. And Rhoda is out of money. You can see his bank in the upper right-hand corner is completely empty. This is going to be it for the units he has, I think. But, for now, he's still defending and still mining with just a handful of probes. Hear the Defiler death there. Another scout moving up. But this is a... Big army from Darkstorm that is starting to morph outside this base. 36 kills on this Archon. Are you kidding me? That That is one hero Archon. Probe making its way across. Kind of testing the front lines. Now Darkstorm moving forward. Getting those lurkers in the front. Able to clear a lot of the stuff that's there. The Guardians... See if they focus on... Yeah, if they focus on those Archons, there's just not a lot to defend otherwise. They could just fire through the scouts, to be honest. And not, where are the Mutalists? Because waiting for Mutalists to be part of this fight. They're to the right, slacking a little bit. Now they're starting to press in. Reaver's taken out, and this should be it for Rhoda. The Guardians in equal numbers here... Well, not equal numbers. The Guardians should, should just be able to pound these Archons down. With their inferior range and being snared... They're going to wipe out. So Rhoda putting up a fantastic fight. But in the nick of time, too, Darkstorm out of minerals. <clears throat> some High Templar moving across, so it's not over yet. If he got some amazing side storms, one great side storm. And unfortunately, moving back and forth across it. But Zerglings are there. And it looks like, yeah, the rest of the unit is going to be wiped out. Now this is in a completely exposed Nexus. And just in the nick of time, Darkstorm should be able to take this Nexus out. <laughs> you got a de defensive stasis there. But also, looks like there was some, uh, some Queen Spawn Broodlings happening there. So this base is going <laughs> to get wiped out. Rhoda finally calling GG. This game had it all, you know? This is one of the reasons I wanted to recast it and try to catch all the action. Special thank you to Rhoda for getting me this replay. It's a fun one. If you wanted to see the original cast, it is up on Patreon. I'm going to just leave it as a Patreon special. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you all for listening.